Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Sho. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday night. Oh, I am excited about preaching to you on Wednesday. I believe in groups. Please make no mistake. I understand that everyone does not learn by way of lecture like this is. Sometimes people learn in a tactile way. Other people learn from discussion. And so groups is the perfect place for us to discuss the Word of God, for us to hear your perspectives, and for us to grow in grace. To all of our facilitators and our elders that are uh, running and ministering the groups, thank you guys so much. We try to give them the summer off uh, because they get tired like everybody else. Uh, so I'm preaching on Wednesdays this summer. I, I hope you'll have me. I hope you'll have me. I, I, wanna, I wanna remain in the series that you guys heard me start on Sunday morning, this series entitled On My Grind. Matter of fact, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a room by yourself. I want you to point right back at me and say, On My Grind. We are in this series, On My Grind, on Sundays and Wednesdays. I want you to go real fast to John chapter 15 with me. John chapter 15. Uh, I would love for you to take notes. Uh, I would appreciate your undivided attention. Matter of fact, you can grab your family Get the kids together, uh, husband or wife together. Let's, let's go to the Word of God uh, and let's look to God for this Word. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that everyone that is paying attention right now, God, you are arresting their heart because you know they need this Word, Father. So I'm praying in Jesus' name that you would move in their lives, God, because of their faithfulness and their honor, even for my voice, for gathering themselves together on this wonderful uh, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, I am asking Holy Spirit that you would speak through me in these very short minutes, that you would give them life. They can have it more abundantly. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go, everybody. John chapter 15. Let's look at verse 2. It reads like this. Every branch in me, every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. Wait a minute. That's a controversial verse that we're going to deal with. I, I hope I can deal with it all tonight. Uh, uh, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Let's look at verse 3, everybody. Verse 3 is important. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Do me a favor, look back at me and say, won't he make you clean? Make you clean? <laughs> say it one more time, won't he make you clean? Uh, Ann Bishop said this, or Annie Bishop said this, there are some questions that shouldn't be asked. There are some questions that shouldn't be asked until a person is mature enough to appreciate the answers. You ought to say amen to that. Okay, let's start off here, ladies and gentlemen. Fruit inspection is a kingdom action. Fruit inspection is a kingdom action, while judging is a carnal action. Fruit inspection is a kingdom action, while judging people is a carnal action. We must inspect fruit from people, but not judge them. Let me say that again. We must inspect uh, fruit production from believers without casting judgment on their vine. Mm. Wow. Poor fruit. Somebody say poor fruit. Poor fruit. Poor fruit. Say it one more time. Say poor fruit. Poor fruit, poor fruit ladies and gentlemen, and I need you to grab a hold of this because this is important. Poor fruit does mean that there is something derogatory going on, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're supposed to nitpick at it. Poor fruit means that there is something. I mean, they wouldn't be producing poor fruit if there was nothing derogatory going on, but we're not supposed to pick at it. It could be internal. It could be external. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to be careful because we don't know the cause. We want to inspect the fruit, but we don't want to judge them in a negative way. Because let me, let me give it to you like this. So, sometimes uh, uh, when, when we were having altar calls uh, pre-pandemic you know, uh, 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 and those sorts of things, we would have people 
come to the altar and they would be crying and some people would assume that because they're crying out, they sin. That's not true. Somebody say, that's not true. They, they, were, they were crying out to the Lord for some other reason. Maybe someone in their family needed a breakthrough. Maybe someone uh, uh, at their job was, was dealing with a sickness and they came to the altar to cry out for them. Whatever the case may be, just because they had tears doesn't mean they did anything wrong. Am I talking good already? Good already. W- watch this. Inspection is an act of love by way of accountability. Inspection is an act of love by way of accountability. Co-pastor can, uh, I'm going to make somebody mad. I may cause some, some, some discussions in the home. Amen, but that's okay. Co-pastor uh, has the right and the ability to grab my phone and go through my phone and look at the pictures and look at the text messages and look at the emails and go through my browser. You know why? Because there is absolutely nothing derogatory that she could ever find because there's nothing derogatory on there. (laughs) Man, you're going to let her go through your phone? She's not going to find anything bad. There's nothing I'm ashamed of on my phone. So she can do it. Watch this. Let me flip it for you. Even if she had some doubts, watch this, even if she had some doubts and grabbed my phone anticipating something was wrong, when she looked through my phone, she wouldn't find anything wrong and that would generate peace. (laughs) Teach Pastor Show, you better get on your grind. Somebody say, get on your grind. She would gain peace because I am willing to be accountable to her. Inspection, inspection is an act of love by way of accountability. Branch business is serious business. Branch business is serious business. Who are you connected to? Who is your branch holding on to? Where are you grafted in? So many of us cannot figure out why their lives, their relationships, their health, their emotional construct, their mind is being poisoned. It's because your branch is connected to a false vine. Your branch, branch business is important business. Your your branch is connected to a vine that's feeding you poison instead of giving you the nutrients of life. You've got to be careful who your branch is connected to say amen to that okay 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 uh, are you sure come on this is this is Wednesday this is Wednesday are you sure that you are connected to God properly are you a branch connected to the kingdom vine or are you attempting to navigate through life creating your own vine are you connected to the kingdom vine or are you a branch trying to do your own thing and create your own vine? This is for those of you who are on your grind living for God. Say living for God. Doing everything you can to stay connected and to stay connected means you have to make some tough choices. Yes, sir. John chapter 15 verse 2 says, every branch in me, mm-hmm. watch this, Every branch in me, in me, branched out of me, connected to me, every branch in me, that's important, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch in me, that means you were a part of it, you were connected. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, every branch in me that's not doing what they're supposed to do, every branch in me that's not producing for the kingdom, the scripture says, he takes them away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it can bear more fruit. Either you have healthy fruit, sit up, sit up, or you don't. There is no middle ground. Either you bear fruit or you don't. There has to be something about you that speaks of your father. There has to be something about you that makes people think about God. There has to be something, an attribute in you that causes people to frame a reference around you that says you are saved, that you are filled with God's presence because there's something different about you. There's no middle ground. The Lord gives us time to produce. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Matthew chapter 25. I love 
I love this narrative. Matthew chapter 25. I don't have time to unpack it all. It's Wednesday. My time is going fast. But Matthew chapter 25, let's just look at verse 24. We, we need this. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 25, verse 24, and the one also who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Ooh, this is good. I, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping what you did not sow and gathering where you did not, uh, and gathering where you scattered no seed. That there are things I want from God. Watch this. Stay with me, Josh. There are things I want from God that I might not be mature enough to handle. There are things I want God to bless me with, but if I'm not mature, I'll mismanage it. This is good, everybody. If he blesses me, Deacon Kiera, if he, if he blesses me with it, and I'm not ready, I'm not mature enough to handle it, I'll squander my opportunity for greatness. Wow. Jonay, are you catching this? I will squander my opportunity for greatness. Maybe he didn't give the relationship. Maybe he didn't give the business. Maybe he didn't give the opportunity because I was not mature enough to handle it. God knew that, and he loves me enough not to give me more than I can bear. Remember when we said that? Lord, don't give me more than I can bear. We, he loves us so much that he won't give us more. He won't put more on us, okay? That works on both sides of the coin. Maybe there's a blessing you want that you can't bear. Teach, Pastor Show. This is getting good to me, everybody. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, okay, okay. Nobody likes this part. What I'm getting ready to give you. Bibs, no, nobody likes this part. This is the part that makes everybody upset. Uh, Moses, you led these people. You did all of this work, but you knew better than to mismanage the rock moment. So since you mismanaged the rock moment, everybody else will go into the promised land I'll give you a glimpse of it, but you won't go. Because, because the requirements for the mature are greater than the requirements of the immature. Oh, I'm going to need some more time, Bibs. I'm going to need some more time. I'm sorry. It's getting good to me. I apologize. It's Wednesday. But I feel, like, I feel a little bit of preaching happening, uh, and I'm supposed to be teaching. Y'all just, just stay with me. Stay with me. Watch this. Watch this. He mismanaged the rock moment. Well, well, what about everybody else? Don't worry about everybody else. You are more mature than that. You can't say, God, teach me your ways and then mismanage the rock moment. When I say hit it, hit it. When I say speak to it, speak to it. He mismanaged it. So, so, so watch this. He doesn't get to go. Oh, God. Help us, Jesus. But, but the immature people that he was leading, they get to go? Okay, okay, here's another one for you. Here's a less popular lesson for you. Here's one that, that, that most people don't recognize. The house of God that Solomon built, the blueprint was given to David. <laughs> he said, David, you got too much blood on your hands. And because you have so much blood on your hands, I'm going to give you the architectural build to actually pull it off, but your son's going to build it. I'm not going to let you build it. Wow. But God, you gave it to me. I got the blueprint for it. I rejoiced about it. He said, yeah, but, but the blood on your hands causes me to tell you you're too mature to, to have done some of the things you've done. So, so what are you saying, Pastor Show? Verse... 20, uh, ver uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 24, he says, I knew you were a hard man. <laughs> this is for the mature believers. You better know sometimes he's a hard man. Oh, God. The mature believers, you just, you just can't, come on, you've been walking with God too long to get away with that stuff. You've been walking with God too long not to get up in the morning and pray on a regular basis. You've been walking with God too long not to have a, a, a word in your heart. You've been, get, you've been working with God too long not to fast with us when we call a fast. This, this is for real believers. He says, he says I gave you one talent because first of all, that's all you could handle by, by show uh, of what the scripture says and what the narrative says. He could not even handle properly the one talent. Now, we have no idea why the other one got more and somebody else got even more than that. We have no idea why God did that. It is according to God's will. But whatever he gives you, you have to manage it with maturity. You better get on your grind. 
You better get on your grind and manage your gifts with maturity. Oh, oh, oh. Because, because what you have, you ask for. What you have, you ask God for. And since you asked God for it and he did it for you, now manage it like a believer. I, 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 see, I see a divine dichotomy developing here. There's, there's a divine dichotomy uh, 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 happening right now. For, forgive me for going way too long, everybody, but, but I got to work this. I feel the Holy Spirit moving uh, right through here. This is an unsettling part because the text says, the text says, if we don't produce, we are taken away. But if we produce, we are pruned. The mature that produce fruit, the reward of production is cutting. The reward of production is pruning. The reward of doing what you're supposed to do is wounds. God shows honor for your body of work by cutting you. It's in the text, everybody. God shows honor for your stick to by causing or allowing people to betray you, people to leave you, things going wrong. Why? He's cutting you, he's pruning you so you can grow. The reward for doing right is to be cut. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Stay with me, stay with me. He allows people to act up so you can grow. He allows people to leave so you can grow. He allows them to fire you so you can grow. He allows people to lie on you so you can grow. It is all so you can grow. You did not do anything wrong. It's so you can grow. You did not mismanage it. You did not mishandle it. It is so you can grow. The reward for doing right is cutting. Yes. Teach, pastor. We have to reconcile the kingdom's reward system because it doesn't seem fair. The mature get harassed and it seems like nothing's happening to the immature. The mature get cut and pruned without their permission. And the text says that those who don't bear fruit, they are taken away. Now, sit up, sit up. This is not a text that... Uh, signals or signifies the loss of salvation as some would like us to believe. This is a very controversial part of the text. This does not signal that someone's losing their salvation. Watch this, everybody. He says, the immature who do not bear fruit, they are taken away. Remember, this is an agricultural reference to growing grapes for wine processing. This is an agri, you got to look at this from an agricultural perspective. You, you, cannot, you cannot juxtapose our natural lives now with being a farmer unless you really understand how they did what they did. So a real farmer understands this not as taken away, meaning I'm going to destroy it because God has already done so much in your life. Why would he destroy you? Why would he kill you? Why would he mangle you when he's already invested his blood on you? So since he invested his blood on you to take you away, it's not anything derogatory at all. Matter of fact, this is going to make all the mature believers get real mad because the mature believers that produce fruit, he, he prunes you and he cuts you. But what it says, it takes him away. What that really means is the vine dresser or the farmer gets that little uh, pack of grapes that's not producing, that little pack of vine that's not producing. And the Bible says he takes it away. What that really means is he lifts it up to the top. So it can have more nutrients, so it can have more sun, so it can be closer to the strength. Oh my God, you missing what I'm saying. He doesn't take you away to hurt you. He lifts you up. Somebody say, it was love that lifted me. Watch this. He takes it and he lifts it up towards the sun out of darkness. It wasn't growing because it was in darkness. I'm almost done. Stay with me. It wasn't growing because it was away from the sun. So the remedy for the immature is proximity. You missed what I said on Sunday. You missed it, didn't you? I want you to be principle-centered, but if you're not principle-centered, he says, I need to bring you a little bit closer just to make sure you get this. When I was teaching... One of the teaching strategies, co-pastor, for bad kids, uh, you're not supposed to call kids bad. That's because you've never been a teacher. 
If you've been a teacher, you've met some bad kids. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me stay. That's for the teachers. All the teachers ought to laugh at me. Okay. 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 What they said, co-pastor, <laughs> what they said was, when a kid is disruptive, you put their seat close to the teacher because the proximity will help you keep control of their actions and their behavior. Watch this, everybody. The reason why you have to be close is because you've been acting up. <laughs> the reason he keep bothering you is because you've been acting up. Now, the mature kids, I would, I would feel comfortable putting them somewhere else, sometimes even towards the back of the class because they were self-starters and they understood and they would get all of their work done. So it was absolutely fine to move them towards the back of the class because the kids who were disruptive had to be close to me. No, that's right. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I'm, I'm just about done, everybody. Listen, I've been up too long. I hope y'all catching this. I hope you're getting something out of this. My middle son, Jaden... My middle son, Jaden, had a conversation with his teacher, and he asked his teacher, he said, I don't understand why the re regular ed uh, students get to make up work, get to turn in their work late, get extra time, get extra pro uh, projects. He said, he says, I, don't, I don't understand why you let them do that, but, but you don't let any one of us in my class, none of us get extra time, uh, none of us... Get, get, get to do extra projects to, to make up grades or anything like that. He said, I'm just asking you. I'm not asking in a disrespectful way, but I just want to know wh why is it that they get extra time uh, in the regular ed classes, but we don't. His teacher said, because you're an honor student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And honor students are expected to perform the first time admirably. Oh, <laughs> And so when he came home and he began to talk about this, I said, well, I would say, well, son, your teacher is right. Honor students don't get extra time. Right? Honor students, they're expected to get it done the first time and get it done the right way. You, 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 are, you are an honor student. And, and the teacher knows you have the capability to pull off what she needs you to do. She would not have given you something that was too hard for you, but it is going to challenge you. Are you still with me? The mature must grind their way through the pruning process so they can produce more fruit. The farmer has to cut so we can grow. The farmer has to lift us up so we can grow. To be honest, I never cut myself. And so since I won't cut me, he's got to cut me. To be honest, I enjoy being underneath in the dark to my own devices. So if, if he don't lift me, I'm not going to lift myself. And I have to be okay with the pruning process, which means some things are cut and lost, and I have to be okay with that. It's impossible to expand without being pruned. God, I'm done, everybody, wants fruit out of you. God wants fruit out of you. I call you from death to life. I call you from darkness to light. I call you from places of pain to places of health. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I need you to get back on your grind. Because we have gardens to face. Sometimes there may be snakes in the garden and sometimes there may be thorns in the garden. I have no idea what you're, some, some of you are going to have to pray through by yourself. Somebody may be with you in the garden. They might not be with you in the garden. We have absolutely no idea what your garden experience is going to look like. But if we are connected to the true vine, oh my God, I didn't even get to verse three, co-pastor. Please forgive me. I'll make sure I hit that on Sunday because you are clean by what he said. Can I just give you a sneak peek? On Sunday, I'm going to deal with this, this fact. This is so important. Cutting is cleaning. <laughs> Lifting is an act of cleansing. Oh, I'm going to get into that on Sunday. Don't miss it. Invite somebody. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you, but I want you to prepare your hearts to give. Everybody, 
I want you to sow into the house of God. Do that right now. Come on, while I'm talking, do that right now. I need you to respond and obey. Respond. I know we're going on vacation soon. I know we missed a whole year of vacation, but these Wednesday nights are important. I want you to be here with me as I'm ministering on this series, this mature series. We can't play games, everybody. We've come through a whole lot of pain. It's time for us to grow up in God. It's not time to do you. It's not time to explore you. No, 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 no. We are getting back on track with God. This is a call of connection and maturity. Come on, I want you to sow right now. I'm waiting for you to sow your seed into the house of the king. Amen. This is good ground. Let's do it right now. The information is available for you. I want everybody to bow their heads for just a moment. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you and I love you. I appreciate you, God, for being so good and so kind. With our whole heart, we are filled with gratitude because there's absolutely nobody like you. And I'm asking God, even on this Wednesday night, that you would pour out your spirit on your people. As we are dedicated and principle-centered, God, we want to follow you. We know what to do, and we want to follow you. We know what to do. As far as our service and our giving and our fasting and our praying and our honoring you, we know what to do. So God, give us the strength to stay connected. As we approach this summer, give us the strength to stay connected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm asking Holy Spirit that you would touch all the mature believers as they get cut. Don't let them run away from your shears. And I pray for all of the immature believers, the new believers. God, lift them up from every area of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I love you. I thank God for you. I'm going to be preaching and ministering on the Wednesday nights throughout this summer. So wherever you are, even if you're on vacation, I want you to meet us back here so that we can minister the words of life. I believe in a midweek touch, whether it's me preaching or co-pastor preaching, uh, one of our elders ministering or one of the ministers or deacons teaching or ministering. I believe in a midweek touch. If it's groups, whatever the case may be, I believe in a midweek touch. And so I want you to honor this opportunity for us to engage in the word of our God. I love you. I thank God for you. I can't wait to see you in person.